All right. The Kosovo Specialist Chambers is now in session. Good morning, Mr. Court Officer. Can you please call the case? Good morning, Your Honours. This is file number KSCPC 2020-05, the Specialist Prosecutor versus Sali Mustafa. Thank you. First of all, I will call appearances. Mr. Prosecutor, you have the floor. Good morning, Your Honours. Uh, today, appearing for the prosecution, Cesare Michalczuk, Prosecutor, Lina Patterson, case manager, Filippo Deminicis, associate prosecutor. Victims Council, you have the floor. Thank you, Your Honours. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Your Honours. The participating victims are represented today by me, Brechtje Vossenberg, co counsel. Thank you. Defense Council, you have the floor. Good morning, Your Honour. <clears throat> Defense is represented by my co counsel, Mr. Betim Shala, myself, Julius von Bonelli, counsel. Interpreter Investigator Mr. Fatmi Pelai in the courtroom is joining Mr. Mustafa, the accused. Very well, thank you. Um, for the record, you are appearing in front of trial panel one. We will hear the testimony of defense witness 1100, which is Mr. Rahimi, Shekhi, Mr. Shakir Rahimi. Before starting the testimony of witness 1100, uh, we would like to inform the parties and uh, the Victims' Council that as communicated to the defence by the email on Friday 8 April at uh, 1558, the panel does not intend to sit on the days 2, 4 and 5 of May, both for organi organisational reasons and because the 3rd of May is a public holiday both in Kosovo and uh, at the Kosovo Specialist Chambers. We intend to resume the hearing after the break scheduled in April on Wednesday 11, Thursday 12 and uh, Friday 13 of May, depending on the availability of the defence. And could the defence confirm uh, that they would be available to start on Wednesday, 11 May uh, 2022? Defence Council, you have the floor. Uh, yes, Your Honour, we will be available on the 11th of May. However, there might be a slight change in the composition. Very well, thank you for that. Now we may proceed with the uh, testimony of defense witness 1100. Madame Court Usher, could you bring the witness in? Thank you. Mr. Rahimi, good morning and welcome to the Specialist Chambers. Can you hear me fine? Cool. Yes. First of all, how are you? I'm well, thank you. Mr. Rahimi, today we will start with your testimony. Uh, you are called to testify before the Specialist Chambers in the case of the Specialist Prosecutor's Office uh, against Salim Mustafa in order to assist the panel to reach a verdict. After you have taken your solemn declaration, you will be asked questions by the uh, counsel for the defense, sitting on that side. Yeah. The counsel for the specialist prosecutor's office, they are sitting uh, with the, the, the toga in purple, and uh, the victim's counsel, 
the council sitting um, most near to you. Yes? And at the end, you might receive also questions from the panel. Yeah, I see you nodding. You understood this? Cool. Yes. Some guidings uh, for answering the questions that you will be asked. Mr. Rahimi, please listen carefully to each question. And if you don't understand, feel free to ask for the question to be repeated. Yeah? We want you to tell the truth. So please share with us what you saw, what you heard, uh, what you experienced, what you sensed. And if you found out in some other way, then you should say so and explain how. You may not remember all details of the events, and this is perfectly fine. Please testify on what you remember. Yes? Um, there's nothing wrong in saying, I don't know, I don't remember. Please answer the questions, stay focused. Uh, if clarification is need, you, uh, you will be asked further questions. Yes? And, uh, uh, and if I see that you are deviating, I might interrupt you just to bring you back to, uh, to the question. And I also remind you that you may refuse to answer questions on issues that might incriminate you. Have you understood all this? Cool. Yes. To give you some practical advice on uh, the, the, the testimony, Mr. Raimi, everything that we say here is translated and recorded, so it's important to talk into the microphones on both sides of you, to speak clearly, and to speak at a slow pace in order uh, for everything uh, what you say to be translated and uh, recorded. Um, you should only start speaking when the person asking you a question has finished. So. When a question is asked, please count up to five and only then start speaking. Uh, this is very important and I insist uh, on it um, because this pause of five seconds is essential for us to properly follow what is said uh, in the courtroom. If I raise my head, stop talking, um, I will try not to say out loud stop, because then uh, our uh, voices will be overlapping, uh, overlapping each other, and then for the interpreters it's impossible to, uh, to interpret. Sometimes I will be asking you to take off your headphones and to put them in front of you uh, when we need to discuss a question that is posed uh, to you and we have to discuss the content, yeah? or you might be ushered out the courtroom. And what is also very important, if you have a question, if you need a break or you need something else, please raise your hand eh, and I will give you the floor so that you can explain to us uh, what is needed. Have you understood all this? Cool. Very well. Yes. Um, Mr. Raimi, do you speak English? No. no. Now, as I must do with every witness, I will now ask you to read your solemn declaration to tell the truth and I, I remind you that it is an offense within the jurisdiction of the specialist <coughs> chambers to give a false testimony. Do you understand this? Oh. Yes. Please assist the witness in uh, with his solemn declaration to tell the truth. Please Mr. Rahimi, read in the text provided to you. In the Conscious of the significance of my testimony and my legal responsibility, I solemnly declare that I will tell the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth, and that I shall not withhold anything which has come to my knowledge. Mr. Rahimi, you are now under oath to tell the truth. Thank you, Madame Courtesher. We can now begin with the testimony of Mr. Rahimi starting with the questioning by the Defence Council, and the panel has authorised the Defence uh, to question witness 1100 in Albanian by email dated 8 April uh, 1556. Defence Council, you have estimated one hour for, uh, direct uh, for direct examination of this witness. Please inform uh, the panel if there are any changes uh, for planning purposes. You have the floor. Yes, of course I will, Your Honour. Thank you.
Good morning, Mr. Witness. Answer, good morning. Question, Mr. Witness, I would like to discuss with you today, namely, I would like you to recount the events that uh, happened in Kosovo in uh, 1999. From January 1999 to June that year, where did you live? Answer, in Orlan. Question, during this time period, what was the security situation in Orlan and the area around? Answer, very difficult. Mr. Witness, please wait a moment. Huh? I know in the beginning it's always a little bit complicated, and you will see after a while it gets better. When you say very difficult, could you please tell us why it was very difficult? Poor. Answer. Yes. We are at the border area with uh, Serbia, and the population was suffering a lot from the Serbian forces. We had many tortures from the police, Serbian police, and uh, we were subjected to uh, ill treatment. Question, during this time frame, that is from June, uh, correction, January 1999 to June 1999, was there any combat activity in that area? Answer, yes. Question, at that time, were you a member of the KLA? Answer, yes. Question, uh, in which brigade? Answer, 151. Question, did you have any specific position, I mean commanding position within 151 brigade? Answer, apart from the position, of uh, a fighter for the liberation of uh, the country, I had no other position. Question. During January, June 1999, did you go through an offensive and did you participate in any offensive? Question, uh, um, answer, I did not participate, but I did uh, go through an offense. Question, during those offensives, were there persons, uh, that is, uh, soldiers and civilians that were injured or killed? Answer, yes. Question, you specifically, did you experience this? Did you see civilians or soldiers injured or killed? Yes. Question, can you tell us uh, of any such case? Answer, yes. Question, when did that happen? Answer, the battle occurred on the 16th, I apologize, on the 9th of uh, April, uh, the battle at the village of Surdul. Question, how far is Surdul from the village where you live? Answer, yeah. two to three kilometers air distance. Uh, I cannot be maybe more precise, but it's not more than that. Question, 
question. You said that the off offensive in Surdul village occurred on 9th of April. Who undertook this offensive answer? The Serbian forces. Question. You personally, were you in Surdul or in Orlan? Answer. I was in the village of Turicic. The Question. And uh, how did you learn about uh, civilians or soldiers who were injured or killed during that attack or offensive? Uh, so can I elaborate uh, a bit at length here? Question, yes, answer. On the 9th of April, the Serbian forces undertook uh, this offensive in Surdul. On the 10th of April, Commander Leka Nuredin Ibishi, together with Korab Parduzi, Kaplan Partuzi, with a pseudonym Korabi, were wounded. In that part, in Turchica village, the entire La population from Radash, Lavashtis, Dobratin, the entire population was situated there in the villages uh, around Orlan. Question, and how did you learn that Nureddin uh, Ibishi and Kaplan Parduzi were e injured? Answer. We were distributing aid to the population, like flour, and elementary basic necessities, plastic covers, uh, so that uh, the people could have a sort of a cover as they were sleeping uh, in the open. And of course, uh, this event was being talked amongst the population, and uh, that's how I heard about it. When I heard that Commander Deka was wounded, there was a makeshift hospital, we called it hospital, it wasn't a hospital, it was a stable. So I went there to that uh, hospital to visit him to see the state he was in, uh, that is the state Nuredini Bishi was in together with uh, Korab Parduzi. There were other Albanians there as well, even children who were wounded. Question, Mr. Witness, why did you go to visit Nuredini Bishi? Answer. I went to visit him because he is from the same village. He is uh, a cousin, so I have a blood relation, and also he comes from the same village. And I had felt this moral duty to go and visit him and see if I could help in any way. Kaplan Question. At that time, did you know Kaplan Parduzi? Answer, yes. Uh, correction, no. Question. Mr. Witness, when you visited Nureddin Ibishi, could you see where they were wounded? Answer, yes. Kaplan Parduzi had his stomach open. Nura, too, was wounded in the stomach area here and uh, in uh, behind uh, the neck, on the back. Question. You told us earlier that you went to visit him and see if he needed uh, any help. Answer? Yes, correct. Question. Was there any need for you to offer him help? Answer, uh, it was not possible for us to offer him any 
help at the time we lacked medical uh, uh, supplies we had some bandages and uh, i could only help by organizing the transport to take him to a hospital question mr witness did anybody ask you to do that to, to provide the transport answer no i voluntarily offer to i didn't question did you know where you had to bring them where that hospital was answer no we didn't know but the only road was from college to go out to Sharban since from the other part it was impossible that area was totally blocked by the Serbian forces from Luch to Popov all the roads uh, and the area was blocked by the Serbian forces and uh, there were about 80,000 to 100,000 people there. The area resembled a camp. So in that part where I said it was impossible to go through, it was the only, uh, the, the Serbian forces were the only ones that operated. A permanent shop. Question, you mentioned the village of Popov. Why did you mention it? Answer, I said, from Popov, the entire population came to our part, to Golak area, started from uh, Surdul, Hereti, Storichis, Drajnje, Orlan, Rakinitz, uh, that whole entire area of Golak, uh, the population that was there came to where we were. Question, Mr. Witness. When you realized that it was necessary to bring uh, the two wounded persons uh, to a hospital for medical treatment, uh, what did you do? What action did you undertake? Answer, at that time, just like the entire population, Albanian population that was on the move, uh, my family also was uh, ready to move around. The Albanians had set all their equipment that they had, uh, tractors, uh, horse carts, with, uh, they had loaded them with food and uh, had made all the preparations to withdraw. So I had also prepared my tractor with uh, food, with clothes, with whatever we had, had covered it with a plastic uh, cover. And when I heard the news and saw my co-villagers uh, and other citizens uh, wounded, I uh, removed all the things from the tractor and went uh, to fetch them. We set off from Turicic village and it took us uh, 48 hours to get to Sharban. Question, Mr. Witness, did anybody help you? To place Nuredin Ibishi and Kaplan Parduzi on the tractor. Answer, yes, there were many people. I cannot say by name who helped them in the hospital, improvised hospital or in my tractor's trailer. I was driving. As far as I know, there was Nura, Kaplan and the doctor. And then shorten Rakinit. Up to the village of Rakinit. Brave shorted Rakinit. From Rakinit village, we are at above 680, 700 meters altitude. 
it was impossible to use uh, normal roads, so we took mountainous roads. Two persons came and uh, joined us. So we were three tractors. I was in my tractor with a wounded, and there were two other tractors in front of me. Question, how far is Turicic from Rakinitz? Answer, as a crow flies, it's four kilometers, but we use other roads uh, which made the journey longer, much longer. Question, when these two persons came to help you, did you know these two persons? Answer, yes. Question, can you tell us who they were? Answer, yes. It was Rahman Zeka and Sabit Rahini. Question, and from Rakini's village, you continued on to where? Answer, from Rakini's village, we continued on to the village of Mazub. From there to the village of Blat. From Blat to Kalatiza. From Kalatiz to Kushevitz. From Kushevitz to Balaban. From Balaban to towards Kolic, and from Kolic towards Sharban, and from Sharban to Rimanisht. Question. During this entire trip journey, did you stop? Did you need any break? Answer. We just stopped once. I don't know what his name was. Uh, as I said, I was driving and that day it rained the whole day. So one person came and said, stop the tractor, Kaplan Parduzi is dying. We stopped for an hour in the rain uh, until he received some treatment i don't know i they gave him iv drips i don't know what uh, treatment they gave him but uh, that was it and we didn't have uh, any other break question during this journey from turichis to rimanisht was there any other person that escorted you? Answer from Turich, it give me a second to explain this segment. From uh, Turich to that vi village, I was uh, escorted by Rahman Zek and Sabit Rahimi, and uh, then I continued on my own. A brief shot at college, there in the shot. Question, and from Kolit to Rimanish, the answer, yes. There were two persons uh, who came, I don't know, I didn't have information how it happened, but these two persons escorted us. They were in a tractor in front of us, about 200 uh, meters ahead, for security reasons, or I don't know. But they were in a tractor in front of us, and they escorted us up to the village of Rimanish. Question, did you know these two persons? Answer, no. Question, and these two persons, were they civilians? Answer, civilians. Question, during this journey, and once you arrived in Rimanish, did you have contact with these two persons? Answer, absolutely not. 
Question, these two persons, did, was it possible for them to approach uh, Rahman Dini, excuse me, Kaplan Parduzi and Nuridin Ibishi to talk to them, answer? At one moment, uh, I'm not sure in what part of the journey. Up to college, uh, I was familiar with the area. After college, I wasn't. So uh, we stopped for my personal needs. And I think the tractor that was in front of us, uh, but I cannot say whether I saw him or not. Uh, so uh, I don't know this segment of uh, the journey. I don't remember it, but as far as I remember it, yes, it was not more than two minutes. Question. During this journey did you hear them address each other call each other answer no i couldn't hear them calling each other i was in the tractor in the front part the trailer behind was covered so it was impossible for me to hear anything question when you arrived in rimanisht uh, what happened next answer after 48 hours, we uh, arrived in Limanisht at around uh, 7 or 8 in the 8.15 in the evening. This happened on the 8th of 10th of April. So we traveled for 48 uh, hours to Limanisht. We arrived there at around 8, 8.15 p.m. Question, did you stop there or did you continue? Answer, we stopped uh, there. We ended up there for that evening. Question, from Rimanish, did you go back to your village? Answer, yes, again back to my village. Question, and do you know what happened with Nuredin Ibishi and Kaplan Parduzi? Answer, I don't know what happened, but I know that, uh, and it's a bit problematic to be more specific, it was, uh, there was no electricity, it was dark. Uh, there was a small Jeep Mitsubishi make, uh, and I saw their feet hanging uh, outside the jeep uh, so uh, after this i did not uh, see what happened i don't know what happened question when they placed them in the jeep uh, did you leave before the jeep or did the jeep leave before you answer uh, i can uh, I would say that we arrived at the same time. As I said, it was dark, there was no electricity. With some matches, we were trying to make some sort of light. Question. When you set off from Rimanish to go back to Orlan, did you leave before the Jeep or answer? No, no. In Rimanisht, I was at uh, the house of uh, an old person that I did not know, and they left Rimanisht, and I don't know where to. Defense counsel and Mr. Witness, uh, please let us slow down a little bit when uh, answering. So take this pause. If uh, Mr. Shala finished his uh, question, please take first a deep breath, and then... Uh, uh, give the, the answer. Thank you. Please continue, uh, Defence Counsel. Yes, yeah, thank you. Your Honour, with your permission, I will kindly ask Court Officer 
put on screen document DSM 00778 and document DSM 0090. This second doc document is uh, in English, a statement of uh, witness given to the defense. And the first document, 778, is in Albanian. And I assume you want to confront so, uh, the witness with... Uh, yeah, I want to confront him with his statement given to the defense. Microphone, please. That the uh, witness has just given testimony on. Yes. Very well. Please proceed, Mr. Court Officer. Police Court Officer, uh, document 00782, page 5, and the document DSM 00095, page 6. Mr. Witness, can you see these two documents on the screen in front of you? Answer yes. Question. The, the document on the left hand side is in Albanian. The right hand side one is in English. Uh, uh, court officer, please. Till, till the, the end of the uh, page uh, in Albanian version. Thank you. Mr. Witness, do you remember that you gave a statement to Salim Mustafa's defense? Answer yes. Question. While being Question by the defense lawyer. In answer to the question, do you know their names? You said, I don't remember. But at least two times, people were saying the name of Sally. Sally. Do you recall to have said that? Answer yes. Question. Can you tell us whether you yourself heard the name of Sally? Answer. Up to Korlich, I am not uh, sure what the place was called, but I know the two persons came there in a tractor. They were not person I, I knew. But then I am repeating to my recollection the other address, the other one saying, Sars, shall we go on the right or on the left? And then I didn't meet them again. I can impose, Monsi, you. Question. Did you manage to have a look at them physically, these two persons? Answer. I said, uh, from a distance, I could. Yes. Question. If you were to see these two persons again, would you be able to identify them? Answer. I might. It is possible. Question. In April of 99, in the context of the event we are discussing, did you know Salim Mustafa then? I heard about 90. Oh, I heard 98. Sorry, but I say, see that you said 99. Sorry for interrupting you. Excuse me. Oh, okay. I can in your. Did you know Salim Mustafa in April of 99? 
podcast. Answer. Unfortunately for me, I didn't know him. So Question. Do you know him today? Answer. I have never seen him in person, but I only saw him on TV. I didn't Salim. Question. Do you know if Salim Mustafa has any, any nickname? I'm the Jew. I heard through I heard on television after his arrest was pub became public, then I realized that his nickname was Sally, but I didn't hear that before. A person it's all question. That person Sally that Sally that you saw during that journey from Turicic to Limanish village. From your memory, can that person be Salim Mustafa? Answer, 23 years have passed by and things change. I cannot be accurate in saying, in giving you an answer. I don't have an answer, actually. Thank you. Your Honor, with your permission, I want to kindly ask the court officer to put on screen the document DSM 00099. It is map. Just the witness to show the road that we took from the village to Richitsa till to village Rimanista. Please proceed, Mr. Court Officer. Mr. Witness, do you see a map on the screen before you answer yes? Question. In the lower part of this map, we see your name, last name, and the signature and the date. Are, is the signature yours? Answer yes. Question. There are some numbers beginning from 1 to 9 on this map. And below every number, we see a circle of place, name, place names. Were you the one who put those signs on this map? Answer yes. Question, what did you want to indicate by these numbers and these circles? Question, this shows, uh, these show the trip or the journey that we undertook. Can you indicate to us again the villages you have circled? Yes. From to reach each. We passed to Rakinitz village. From Rakinitz, we went to Blat. And got lot from Blat. We went to Kalatitz. Kalatitz from Kalatitz, we went to Kushevitz. Gavsotik from Kushevitz. We went to Balaban village. From Balaban village, we went to Kolich village. From Kolich, we went to Sharban village. And from Sharban to Rimanish village. Thank you, Mr. Witt. Question. After what happened in April 99, did you ever meet with uh, Nureddin Ibishian Kaplan Padruzi? 
I answer. I did meet Noreddin. I want to not regain question. When did you meet him for the first time? After this event, if you remember. Answer. I think it was about two months afterwards. After that. Because he was recovering, so I met Nureddin after two months. Uh, I think it was on the occasion of Bayram. Yeah, on that occasion. Question. You said he was recovering. Do you know where? Answer no. Question. When you met, did you discuss uh, what happened then? Meaning in April 99? Answer, no. No, we didn't need to discuss that. We were experiencing a lot of trauma, so personally I would avoid such uh, hard talks, I would say. I need a minute consultation with my son. Very well. Please proceed. Your Honor, I don't have further question for the witness. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Witness, def the defense has no more questions for you. Thank you. Answer, thank you. Thank you. Um, Mr. Prosecutor, uh, it would be now uh, your turn. Um, would you be ready to do uh, to start with the cross examination, or shall we have a break of uh, half an hour? You are, uh, a little time would be helpful just to note down a few references in the transcript. Yes. Uh, so uh, it's up to your honours, though. No. Uh, thank you. What we will do then, uh, we will take half an hour break a little bit earlier than we do usually, but I think uh, it's a natural uh, moment uh, because we finished the examination in chief, uh, the, the, the direct examination. Um, Mr. Witness, what we will do now is we will have a break of 30 minutes and after that the uh, counsel for the specialist prosecution office will uh, do uh, the cross-examination so he will be the one asking you questions okay right. madame court assure okay thank you thank you Thank you, Madam Court Usher. We will meet again at 10 minutes uh, till uh, 11. The hearing is adjourned. All right.
place. I note that we are in the same composition. We can continue. Uh, Madame Kortescher, could you uh, bring the witness in, please? Welcome back, Mr. Witness. Thank you. I'll give the floor to the Specialist Prosecution's Office for the cross-examination. Mr. Prosecutor, you have the floor. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Good morning, Mr. Uh, Rahimi. Good morning. You testified today that at the time you took um, Nuredini Inibishi and uh, Mr. Parduzzi from Turicice to Rimaniste, you did not know Salim Mustafa. Is that correct? Oh, yes. You never heard of him until you saw him on TV after the war, had you? Oh, yes. You also stated that you did not know his nickname, which is Sally, which is something that you also learned uh, after the war upon seeing him on TV. Did I get that right? Oh. Yes. So it's fair to say, is it not, that on that night the name Sally was not a name of particular uh, significance uh, to you, was it? Um. Could you just formulate it open? Uh, I mean, I, I, you're really implying something now. Yes, Your Honor, I'm sorry. Um, was uh, uh, Tzali um, a name of particular significance to you the night that uh, you uh, were escorting the wounded? Absolute conference, yes. No. It had absolutely no importance for me. And yet, 23 years later, upon being prompted again this morning, but 23 years later, you claim to recall that somebody whom, and we'll get to that, you weren't even sure who they was, said Tzali. Sally, a couple of times. Is that your testimony today? Oh. Yes. I'm asking because uh, I am, again, it's 23 years ago, and, and I want to see if you are sure about that. So you're certain today that you remember that name? Oh. Yes. You say it was raining. Correct? Oh. Yes. Tractor. Is that correct? Oh. Yes. There in a college. Up to college, there were two tractors ahead of me. You heard the name. I understand that the two people who came afterwards, they were also driving a tractor. So was it there your tractor and another tractor in front of you? 
Dele ne kolleş. Aptu kolleş. I said I follow Roman Zeka and uh, I carry it. Roman Zeka. Sorry, can he repeat, please? Mr. Yes. Witness, can you repeat your answer because the interpreter didn't get it uh, exactly. Oh. Me khabar tiel sa betrahi me the Rahman Zeka menne traktor. Rahman ne traktor sa bitin traktor. The man two traktor at the cell shen kom two traktor a parami. They escorted me. Each of them had their own tractor. That is Ramazan Zeka and Sabit Rahimi. Then in college, uh, in or, or, uh, around college, uh, you stated that two other people in civilian clothes that you did not know also joined uh, the convoy. Is that correct? Um, Mr. Prosecutor, could you give the references yes, for the record? Christa, of course, uh, that's what we normally do. I don't know. Yeah, it's page uh, 17. Um, up to college, I am not sure what the place was called, but I know that two persons came there in a tractor. Uh, they were not persons I knew then. Uh, and then, so at that point, when the two persons arrived in college, was it your tractor, this new people's uh, tractor, and had the other tractor left by then? Uh. The two tractors, when the tractor that you are asking me about with these two persons, they were in one tractor. During that time, I was alone in my tractor. But for my understanding, because I'm getting lost between the tractors, um, the two tractors that were already there, huh? what, uh, what happened to those two? Ata. They returned, they went back. Back to uh, Mr. Prosecutor, but uh, please um, bear in mind, I would like now to have some clarification with regard to how many tractors were there, when and where. Okay, so let's take it from there. Mr. Witness, you said that uh, you uh, set off from uh, Turicice with your tractor and uh, the trailer carrying the wounded. Is that correct? Paul? Yes together with you, uh, a doctor. Is that right? Yes. Tractor joined you, uh, uh, and you named the two gentlemen in the tractor, uh, that you knew them. I think uh, that uh, you stated to the defense in your statement, provide the reference that they are dead now. And so at some point you became two tractors. Is that correct? Tractors. Well, Your Honor, I understand there's the, 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 uh, the witness tractor with the trailer attached, and then another tractor uh, with two uh, gentlemen uh, uh, leading the way. I would propose that you ask uh, the witness if uh, he was driving, uh, if they, if they, those two gentlemen, were driving in one tractor or in two separate Thank you, Your tractors. Honor. Because I, we apparently understood it differently. So. Well, in fact, Your Honor, you might be. Uh, Please, uh, Mr. Witness. Two persons were with e one tractor each, namely there were two tractors for two persons. Now we have three tractors, Mr. Witness. Thank you, Your Honor. Three tractors. Three tractors. And by the time you arrived to college, when these other two people uh, arrived with their tractors. You stated that these two people in the tractors had left. Sucked. Correct. 
I think we have clarified, thanks to your honors, that there were two tractors left at that point. Now, when... Mm, oh, wait, wait. Um, Mr. Witness, can you take your headphones off? And then, thank you. For my understanding is that we have one tractor with trailer where the witness was in, and then now we will be discussing the new tractor yes. um, with two other persons Correct. in that tractor. That Correct. Okay, yeah, 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 okay. Yeah, yeah. that's, that's, uh, that's just to... Uh, Correct. Please no. proceed, uh, Mr. Prosecutor. Yes. Now, today, uh, when... Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Witness. Now, today, when defense counsel uh, first asked you if you could hear the persons on the tractor um, addressing each other, you stated, and I think this is page 17, 17, Your Honor. No, I couldn't hear them calling each other. I was in the tractor, in the front part. The trailer behind was covered, so it was impossible for me to hear anything. Do you remember stating that? I didn't understand it. Today, defense counsel asked you uh, whether you could hear these, these people who had um, arrived uh, once you were in college. You were asked whether uh, you could uh, hear them addressing each other. And you at first answered, no, I couldn't hear them calling each other. I was in the tractor in the front part. The trailer behind was covered. So it was impossible for me to hear anything. Do you recall stating that? Yes. Correct. Thank you, Mr. Prosecutor. And I, th uh, defense counsel, you will receive the floor. And if it's on the reference? Um... Uh, yeah, it is uh, page 13, this question made, and the question it was uh, for Nureddin Ibishi and Kaplan Parduzi, not for that two persons that they came with tractor. Yes. So That's... I didn't make that question, and I didn't get the answer on that question that the prosecutor no. made now, um, post it now. Thank you for your uh, comment, uh, Defence Counsel. Um, Mr. Witness, can you take off your headphones, please? Thank you. Um, Mr. Prosecutor, I, uh, I had a slightly different comment um, that the question you are referring to is not on page 17, because on page 17, uh, uh, tzali tzali, uh, uh, the words tzali tzali are discussed. And on page 14, uh, a question in the line of what you just asked the witness was asked, but uh, not with regard to these two uh, witnesses, the new one, uh, the, these two persons, the new persons, but I have to reread it. Uh, but re with apparently what the defense counsel has said with reference to other persons. So I, I, I would like, I would ask you to be more precise uh, when citing uh, it. Excuse me, Your Honor. Defense counsel. Uh, I, I cannot understand what is written on page 27, line 1. Okay. Could That's on a different topic? Uh, yeah, I just want to No, see but a defense counsel, just for my understanding, because yeah. then I different can separate topic. for a moment. Yeah. Is this on this specific topic? No, 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 no. Okay. Can we then do it afterwards? Then I can give the time. Uh, then we can finish with this moment, with this uh, specific issue. Do you, do you need some more time, uh, Defense Counsel, um, Mr. Prosecutor? Then I continue with uh, the victims, with the Defense Counsel to see. Uh, I'm, I'm ready, Your Honor. Thank you. Okay. Um, so, 
Um, will you take into consideration uh, the two remarks we uh, just made, both b uh, made by the uh, Defence Council? And I, will, I will, Your Honour, and okay. I apologise for having misstated that, uh, that part. The Defence Council was correct, as was Your Honour. Thank you. And now I get back to uh, the Defence Council. Uh, you said line 27. Okay, very well. I could hear them. I was informed, uh, Defence Council, that they will re-listen what was said and then it will be corrected. Huh? Very well. Mr. Prosecutor, you have the floor. Yes, and for the record, uh, what I was referring earlier was, it, it's partly correct what Defence Council said, it was about these two people, whether he had heard these two people talking to the people on the trailer behind. Right? So, not, not between each other. No, I, uh, I think I understood you. But uh, the witness has already his headphones up, so... Um. Okay. So, um, I just, I would like to understand uh, where were you uh, when these people, um, whether these people approached uh, your trailer and where were you at that time? Because I think the answer was uh, a bit unclear on the record. At page 13, Defense counsel asked you, during this journey, and once you arrived in Rimanishte, did you have contact with these two persons? And you stated, absolutely not. Then defense counsel asked you, these two persons, was it possible for them to approach Rahmandini, um, sorry, Kaplan Parduzzi and Nureddin Bishi to talk to them? And you answered, at one moment, I'm not sure at what part of the journey, up to college, I was familiar with the area. After college, I wasn't. So we stopped for my personal needs, and I think the tractor was in front of us. But I cannot say where I saw him or not. So I don't know this segment of the journey. I don't remember it. But as far as I remember it, yes, it was no more than two minutes. So um, did these two persons approach or not the trailer with Kaplan, Parduzzi, and uh, Nureddin Bishi? Yes, I did say that. Two minutes. Where were you when they approached Kaplan, Parduzzi, and Nureddin Bishi? I stated earlier, we stopped for my personal needs for two minutes, the tractor stopped. And during those two minutes, that break, they could have spoken to them during those two minutes, but not more than that. We did not have the time to stop and talk, because it was a question, a matter of life or death. Okay, so they could have talked to them, uh, approached them. Did you see them? Um, approach the trailer with Kaplan, Parduzzi, and Nuredini Bishi? Did you actually see these two people approach the trailer? I saw one person, not two. I am sure that uh, about one person, it was very short. You leave the tractor and you go for your personal needs. How far did you go from the tractor? What, what? 10 to 15 meters. So you do your personal needs. Do you have your back to the tractor? Normal. Of course. It's fair to say that at that time you weren't looking towards the tractor, were you? You. No. Finish um, your personal needs, you turn, and you go back to the tractor. Is that correct? Four. Yes. One person there. 
Is that what you recall seeing? I said the tractor from college, the tractor, there were two persons escorting us, civilians, but as far as I remember, there was only one person who could reach the trailer. That was, that short break lasted for two minutes. And this is where I got confused, because you stated to the defense that at some point, and you stated, I'm repeating to my recollection, you're talking about two persons, and I believe it's page 17. The other addressed the other one saying, Tsai, shall we go to the right or to the left? But now it will appear there was only one person that approached your tractor, and no, 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 not two persons. So did you actually hear the two people saying, Sally, let's go to the right on, on the left, under the rain, with the tractor engine on. Um, yeah. I have a point to make, but I see that the witness has raised uh, his hand. Please, Mr. Witness, what do you want to say? <laughs> I would like to clarify again. I'm saying something different and he understands it differently. I am stating what happened. If he wants to say what he wants to say, I cannot say that. I said initially that the tractor up to college was escorted by two tractors until one part of college too. Rahman Zeka and Sabit Rahimi. The area around college is flat. They returned home. Because I'm very, I'm a little bit confused for now too. So I, uh, I would be more than happy if you could clarify it for us. Yes, correct. I'll explain it. At that at the moment, there a, a tractor came carrying two persons, one tractor and two persons. During the journey, we did not have time to discuss or to greet one another because it was war. It was a very difficult situation, plus the condition of the two patients, of Nureddin Ibish and Kablan Partuzi. At that moment, one person asked him, as far as I can remember, Tsal, shall we go to the right or to the left? Was was that, uh, the, the person who asked that, was that one of these two new persons that had arrived with the tractor? Yes. Questions of Mr. Prosecutor have to do with one of the persons approaching the tractor of the witness. Would but you like to continue with that specific point? Because I don't want to under, uh, overtake uh, here your cross-examination on this specific yes, point. Yes, sir. No. Well, I think I'm not very clear as to when the uh, witness actually heard uh, this, this, um, uh, the name Tsali Tsali. So that's what I'm trying to, to find out. You uh, may. Um, Mr. Witness, can you take off your headphone? I have to make a remark to the, uh, or a question to, the, to Mr. Prosecutor. Thank you. Mm, I heard you saying something about the tractor engine on. Um, 
I, I, I hadn't heard that before uh, as being brought into evidence. Um, I, Your Honor, I apologize. I should establish that first. I didn't hear the witness saying he shut the tractor off as he explained the uh, uh, chronology of that moment as it unfolded. So I, 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 I got ahead of myself. I should have established that first. Okay, so please uh, do that. Be yes. Um, Try to be precise, uh, because I can imagine that the fan stands up and says uh, that was not elicited uh, at this moment in time. You have not. the floor um, to continue. And for that, may I, Your Honor? Yes, and then I will ask you. Yes. Yeah. Please, uh, yes, you just, may. Just, uh, and after that, I will ask the witness to put on yes, his headphones. And, and if that uh, moment that the uh, uh, council is interested in when was whatever said. Maybe he can ask that simply in an open question. When, at which point in time was that said that he heard that? Rather than uh, determining for him a point, just have an open question like that, like we all have to do. My colleague uh, indicated that uh, on la page 33, lines 5 and 6, um, the answer is not, has not been translated. So we are also at this moment in time left in, uh, uh, no, yeah, I, I don't know what has been said at that moment in time by the witness. So I, uh, that, that makes it, it makes it complicated for all of us to assess what the witness has said uh, on this particular point. Um, uh, Mr. Prosecutor, uh, you may proceed, um, uh, and I suggest to you that you try to make an open question, but also a precise question to the witness on uh, the moment uh, he heard. Uh, or what and like I also always do with uh, uh, the examination chief, I try not to interfere too much with the, the line of questioning, of course. But uh, let's keep it open more because uh, apparently it's uh, an important point in, uh, in this uh, examination. Please proceed. And Mr. Witness, you can put on your headphones again. Thank you. Can you hear me fine? Yes. Just a second, Your Honor. So, page 13, the witness, um, Mr. Witness, you stated that um, from the defense counsel asked you line eight, and from college to Rimaniste, so he was asking about you about the trip from college to Rimaniste, and you stated, yes, there were two persons who came. I didn't have information how it happened, but these two persons came, escorted us. They were in a tractor in front of us, about 200 meters ahead, for security reasons, or uh, I don't know. Do you confirm that these two people, as they joined you, um, they were on a tractor 200 meters ahead of you? It's, I'm just asking you whether the transcript correctly uh, is correct, uh, co correctly uh, uh, transcribed your, your, uh, your answer. Was the tractor 200 meters in front of you? Y yes or no? Yes or no? No, I must elaborate here because I said something else and I think you have understood it differently. Uh, Mr. Witness, what is transcribed here is literally what you have said before. So, Mr. Prosecutor is not inventing this. He has been citing what you have been saying this morning to the 
uh, defense counsel. If you meant something else, you can explain, but he is not making something up. Uh, that's what we all have heard and what is transcribed here, unless that there has been made a mistake. So, can you confirm that you said this? I can say that at the beginning they were at a very close this they were very close when the tractor passed us by and he said whether to go to the left or to the right as I as I recall it, it they called the name Tali twice and then they continued at which point they moved 200 meters away so they were in a they were moving along and they moved along because of the security situation for security reasons I don't know if I am clear we understand now that you heard the name Sally should we go here or there as the tractor was passing uh, what was overtaking you uh, in order to position itself 200 meters uh, in front of your tractor is that correct Please, Mr. Witness, it's not enough to not, because if you not, it's not tra translated. So you have to say yes or no. The 200 meters to which I'm referring to, as I understand it, the 200 meters that was when the tractors were overtaking each other. And that is the moment where I heard the name Tsali. The first tractor continued on its journey 200 meters ahead of us. I really don't understand I anymore. I will clear it up. So you stated our understanding is that the tractor came from behind, overtook you, and position itself uh, about 200 meters in front uh, of your uh, tractor uh, for what you stated to be possibly security reasons. Is that correct? Yo. N no, that's not correct. Okay, can you then explain um, to us, when did you hear the two persons saying the name um, Sally? I have no translation. Should I repeat the question? I will wait for uh, um, further comments of uh, the interpretation booth. Um, is it working now, Mr. Witness? Yes. Mr. Prosecutor, if you repeat the question and then we are sure that he has heard. Uh, what you said. At what point in time did you hear one person telling uh, the other, Kali, Tali, shall we go on the right or on the left? At what, at, at what point in time? I cannot give you the exact time it was the it was evening around four o'clock in the afternoon or five o'clock in the afternoon we did not have a watch to keep time <coughs> yes that's correct yes i was with my tractor he was with his own tractor he was with his own tractor and we were overtaking each other. So while he was overtaking us and passing by, he went, he continued 200 meters in front of me. I don't know if this is clear. When did you hear the name Tali that was said by one of those two persons in the tractor? Huh? When did you hear that? In college. In college. In college. I mean, sorry for not being clear, I don't mean the town, I mean the moment in time. Was it 
when they were driving in front of you or when they surpassed you that you heard their voices or were they still behind you with their tractors? That is what I meant. As he was overtaking, so when our two tractors were next to each other, that is when I heard the person saying, Tsal, should we go to the left or to the right? The prosecutor. Yeah, thank you for clarifying that. So you were driving, they were driving, both tractor engines were on, correct? I don't understand. Driving the tractors at that time. So you were driving, the other tractors was driving at a faster speed so that it overtook you. Is that correct? Oh. Yes. <clears throat> because I had to drive slower as I had, I was transporting the wounded persons. See the mountain road, were you, were you going uphill at the time, do you remember? Yes, it was a mountainous area at an altitude of 700 meters. Yes, very steep. Otherwise, if it had been flat, I would have gone by myself and not with two tractors. Driving on a low gear, were you not? Please ask open questions. Were you, um, on what gear, do you remember on what gear uh, were you driving your tack tractor? I mean, you were up, going uphill. Was it a low or a high gear? I will explain it to you in our own uh, uh, in our own language, it was in uh, third gear. Now, so I think that the, the picture that we've managed to clarify uh, with some effort uh, is that as the tra two tractors were driving, you pulling a trailer up the mountain road, as the tractor of uh, these two people overtook you, you heard Tsali, Tsali. Now, was it raining? Yes. At that time, the name Sally for you had no particular uh, significance. Absolutely, yes. Absolutely no meaning whatsoever. Years later, you recall, at that point, when the tractor was overtaking you under the rain, two engines, two tractor engines on, driving on a steep road uphill, one asking the other, Sally, Sally, where should we go? That's your testimony today. Yes. Now, let's talk about the other episode when you um, stop to tend to your uh, personal needs. You said earlier that it's possible that one of the two men on the tractor at that point approached the trailer. Do you, say, do you recall saying that? Cool. Oh. Yes. Now, when you stopped your tractor to go tend to your personal needs, was it then when the other tractor was driving 200 meters uh, uh, ahead? Oh. Uh. Yes. I stopped the tractor and he started driving in reverse with his tractor. 
to ask what happened. I told him, and during that period, because it had been raining as well, it was raining, I think he approached the trailer and that was it. You, did, did you talk to him now? Is that, are you now saying that you, when during that episode, you talked to this person who approached the trailer? Yes, he asked what happened, nothing, and... So now actually approached the trailer, and now you talk to him. You didn't, you didn't say that in your defense statement, did you? That you talked to one of these two people. I don't uh, uh, classify it as a conversation when somebody asks you what happened. I didn't say it because it wasn't very important. I just, uh, because I had stopped for my personal needs, I didn't think it was uh, reasonable for me to explain that. It's been 23 years since then. It's a bit of a problem to remember all the small details. But today, I think it's still page 13, Defense Council asked you, so it, it's two dates, just about maybe half an hour ago, or one hour ago, during this journey, so during this journey, and once you arrived in Rimaniste, did you have contacts with these two persons? And you stated, rather assertively, if I may say, absolutely not. You recall stating that today. Oh. Yes. But now you're stating that, in fact, you had a little chat with one of them when you stopped for your personal needs. I mean, do you have a clear recollection of those events 23, 23 years later, uh, uh, Mr. Rahimi? Uh, not as fresh as it would have been then. It's been 23 years. As well, you have contacts with that. Is it absolutely not? Or is it yes? You absolutely. No, absolutely not. Only when I stopped the tractor and was asked what happened and for my personal reasons. That was it. That was the... I did not have any other conversation. I did ask you if during the journey you had any contact with these two people and you said absolutely not. You were very assertive in your answer. You didn't say you know, just briefly as we stopped. You said absolutely not. So... Now you, you seem to have changed your mind. How come? I am not changing my mind, not at all. But I don't call a conversation. I didn't consider that a conversation. Uh, being asked a question, what happened, and me telling him nothing happened. I don't consider that a conversation. Mr. Witness, you are here eh, under oath to tell us the truth. Yeah? I remind you to do, to, to do so. Huh? It's a very serious uh, matter here. So please tell us the truth. Um, and now uh, I... I, 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 I I hear something that could, could be interpreted as a contradiction. So for me, it's, it's, it's really not clear at this moment in time. So uh, do your utmost, uh, and don't look at, them, look at us, do your utmost to say what is the truth. Mr. Prosecutor, you have the floor. Yeah. 
I mean, you are referring to a conversation. You may not consider that a conversation, but you consider that to, would you consider that to be a contact with somebody? That's good. I'm, I'm, I'm asking because... Contact. Yes, a contact. Did you have contact with these two persons? He did not ask you if you had a conversation. He asked you whether you had any contact with them. And you stated, absolutely not. So how can you explain that you were so certain this morning that, that didn't happen, and now, all of a sudden, you managed to uh, recall that you had a fact, not just a contact, you had a, an exchange with this person? Which one is the truth? It's either that I'm not understanding it or something is not functioning. Something at a three meter distance, I would not call it a contact to tell you the truth. And a conversation. It was a very brief meeting, exchange. But that is a contact, uh, Mr. Witness. That is a contact. I mean, um, we, are in, uh, I, I, we don't have to play with words here. There was a, a, a moment of contact. I cannot say it differently. What you know, we have to see it and talk. I didn't uh, take it as a contact, uh, so I did not find it reasonable to call it a contact. I, uh, I already said it to you, and um, my colleague was repeating it. You're all the time looking to the defense. It's, you should not look at them. You should give us an answer yeah, about... Uh, what happened then? And um, I, what I hear now from you, that we are uh, yeah, walking around these words of contact, conversation, exchange, what I see in the transcript, eh, and I will say it in my own words, because I don't want to put words in your mouth, that at a certain moment of time you said that you had no contact with them. And I understood that, yeah, in that moment of time when the question was asked, that there was no exchange, no conversation, nothing. And later on, on the question of uh, Mr. Prosecutor, you, you, you shared with us that, to the contrary, there was an exchange. There were some lines exchange between you and them. And for me, for now, eh, that, that seems that it is contradicting itself. But you are here to explain yourself. So I want to hear from you what you meant with that. And we will give you the floor to explain that again. And what I understood up till now from you, and please correct me if I'm wrong, eh, what I understood from now to, from you is that when you said no contact, you didn't include that you exchanged two lines with each other. Is that, is that what you're saying? Contact. Contact. This is how I understand it. Contact. We did not talk. It was just what happened, nothing, let's go. So that's why I did not say that we had a contact. I didn't call it a contact. I, I will leave it uh, for now here. Um, uh, I have tried to explain uh, where the misunderstanding could be. Mr. Prosecutor, you have to... Your Honour, may I just... Yes, shall, shall you take it yes. off? Yes. Okay, very well. Uh, Mr. Witness, can you take off your headphones, please? Defence counsel, you have the floor. Uh, Your Honour, I do not think that we are dancing around words in whatever way, but I think 
indeed sometimes the perception of one person and another person about the same word can be different. And that is, I think, what, what, uh, what is maybe uh, happening. So um, in, in that particular, uh, if, if that issue comes up again in whatever way, then maybe it is um, uh, also a matter of what the witness in that, uh, whatever he says, word, what, what he perceives from that, rather than that we define what is contact or what is not contact. But I mean, that the is a, a really a, a it, 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 many times people speak about a particular word and they, they give a, me a different meaning to it. And I think that the witness does need to give an answer to the question. However, I think if his perception of the same word is another one then that the prosecutor, we, or the panel might have, that's fine, as long as he gets the opportunity to explain that perception of him. Thank you very much. That's all my... Uh, uh, Defense all my Counsel, I think that uh, Mr. Witness has been given, also by the panel at this moment in time, ample opportunity to explain himself. Uh, so I, I can only agree with uh, what you're saying, but that is what we have been doing. So we now... Uh, no, I, but I, I just no want to give continue. it also to the prosecutor. No, no, but counsel, now I will continue. Rather than that we, we Defense counsel, we make an issue it's over it. now. Thanks, Your Honor. Um, to continue, we were at page 13 uh, again. I asked whether you had any contact with these two persons. You stated absolutely not. Then defense counsel continued. These two persons, was it possible for them to approach um, Kaplan? Uh, prosecutor, uh, apologies. I should have indicated to Mr. Witness that he had to put on his headphones. So uh, uh, I will now ask him to do it, and then I, uh, I will kindly repeat, uh, uh, ask and you to repeat the question. Mr. Witness, can you put on your headphones? I, I should have uh, realized no, that myself, no. Your Honor. It's also my responsibility. Uh, apologies, uh, Mr. Witness. I had not indicated to you that you had to put on your headphones. Mr. Prosecutor. Please uh, uh, repeat the question. Uh. Okay. So um, we've discussed this issue that uh, about you having any contact with these two persons and you answering absolutely not. You explained to us uh, uh, why uh, you gave that answer. But then defense counsel continued and he stated, these two persons, was it possible for them to approach Kaplan Parduzzi and Nuredini Bishi to talk to them? And this was your answer. At one moment, not sure we, um, at which point, after college, um, I wasn't familiar with the area, you stated, so we stopped for my personal needs. And this is where you told us, as you were coming back from your personal needs, that you exchanged uh, a couple of words with one of these two people. Is that correct? No, I did not say that I exchanged microphone for your understanding. Witness said, according to my understanding, um, I, uh, I ask you to cite again exactly what he said because uh, the because I don't want the witness to be confused. Well. I'm sorry, page 13 at the end, and then page, start, page. starting at uh, page 14 uh, the, at the beginning. It's the last line of page 13 and then beginning of page 14. So we stopped for my personal needs, and I think the tractor that was in front of us, but I cannot say whether I saw him or not. So I don't know this segment of the journey. I don't remember it. But as far as I remember it, yes, it was not more than two minutes. This would would be page 14, lines 1, 2, 4. Yes. Um, Mr. Witness, can you take off your headphones? Sorry for that. Uh, I'm now going to line 44, uh, page 44, line 22. Let me see what was uh, uh, said there. Uh, um, 
Now, wasn't there somewhere else where Mr. Uh, Witness indicated when he talked? Yes, Your Honor. Um, and because what I don't remember that he explicitly said that it was when he came back, and if that's so, then we should just read it out to him. Um, well, because I don't want him to be asked several times the same question. Um, just, just a second, Your Honor. So, um, well, I need to start it from uh, page 40, um, line uh, 17, Your Honors. Mm. Yes, okay. Yes, um, so page 40. Now, uh, when you stop your tractor to tend to your personal needs, was it then when the other tractor was driving 200 meters away? Yes, I stopped the tractor and he started driving reverse with his tractor. Okay, I understand. Uh, to ask what happened, I told him, and during that period, because he had been raining as well, it was raining, I think he approached the trailer and that was it. And then I asked him, so do you talk to him now? Because you hadn't said that before. And he stated, I don't classify it as a conversation when somebody asks you what happened. I didn't say it because it wasn't very important. I just, because I had stopped for my personal needs. So my understanding is that the tractor reversed when he stopped for his personal needs. And that is when this contact uh, may have happened. Yes, but what I heard that you were saying that it was when he f had finished with his personal needs. And from this line, uh, he, from this part of the evidence he uh, gave, I don't see an indication of the moment that he uh, uh, approached. Uh, and you were already implying that it was after he finished his needs. So that, that was the only point that we have to uh, ask him uh, when it was. That, that uh, was my point. Oh, okay, Your Honor. Yes, uh, sorry, it like, wasn't precisely at that. Uh, after we finished, it may have been before. Maybe it was before. I don't know. But yeah. Yeah, because yeah. we are going into the very details, we have to be precise. Um. Yeah. So, um, Mr. Witness, you stop for your personal needs. Uh, Mr. Witness, you told the panel today that at some point you stopped for your personal needs. At that point, the tractor that was driving at the time 200 meters ahead of you started coming in reverse. Is that correct? Oh, sorry. Yes, yes, correct. In this conversation, this exchange that you had with one of the persons, had you got off your tractor already on your way to this 15 meters away place where you tended to your personal needs? Or were you still on your tractor? It was outside the tractor on the road. What happened? Nothing happened. Uh, personal needs and that was it if you um, spoke to uh, this person before or after, uh, so uh, tending to your personal needs? Before attending to my personal needs. Because after stating that you had absolutely had no contact uh, with, uh, uh, with them, you uh, again explained um, what happened. And you stated at one moment, I'm not sure at what part of the journey, I'm reading page 13, Your Honor, uh, line 24, up to college, I was familiar with the area. After college, I wasn't. So we stopped for my personal need, and I think the tractor was in front of us. But I cannot say where, whether I saw him or not. Who were you referring to? Whether you, you weren't sure whether you saw him or not. And it's page 14, uh, line 2, Your Honors.
As far as I understood the question, uh, uh, the question was whether Tsali spoke with Korabi if uh, he approached the tractor. It was whether one of the two persons had approached the tractor. And you said that you couldn't say whether you saw that person or not. That's what you said, right? Sucked. Yeah. Correct. Had any conversation with this person at the time? The conversation with this person was before he approached the tractor, before he came near to the tractor. Before you, you came near to the truck, how, how far away was this person from the tractor when you had the conversation? We have a tradition uh, when you have your personal needs, you don't do it on the road, so you just try to find a place uh, in the woods uh, to tend to your personal needs. So. While I was going there, that's where that exchange or conversation took place. And at what distance was this person that you talked to when you had this conversation? Started me at Seven, eight meters, ten meters. I didn't have a GPS to measure the distance. Well, at this, you, you, men, you made no mention in your defense statement and today uh, earlier of this contact, and you just uh, mentioned it now. So uh, is there, again, for one last uh, time, uh, any reason why uh, that came back to your mind uh, when I started questioning you about uh, the meeting. But you haven't stated that before. I thought that contact is not uh, uh, something that you have with a person uh, and a small exchange. That's it. Peter, I, I would leave it uh, yeah. for now with regard done, to this Honor. point. I think that... Can I just have a second? Runner, are we um, planning to have the break at uh, 12? I was uh, planning to, uh, to do one and a half hour of, uh, of session. Okay. Um, so uh, we uh, started at 10 minutes to 12. Yeah. Huh? Am I right? So to, ele to, to 11. Yes, so then till 12. So 20 minutes past 12, uh, I, I wanted to finish just to, to do a one, a half, one and a half hour session. Um, uh, in that case, Your Honor, I, um, I don't have any further question uh, for this uh, witness. That, okay. That's all. Thank you, uh, Mr. Prosecutor. Victims' Council, um, would you be ready to uh, ask questions uh, to the uh, witness? Or would you prefer to have the break first? I have no questions for this witness. Okay. Thank you, Your Honors. That was another possibility that I did not uh, include. Uh, very well. Mm, then, for my information, uh, Defence Council, uh, would you uh, uh, like to do uh, a redirect? Yes, on your honour. Only one question. Okay. And are you prepared to do that now? Yes. Or, uh, okay. Then yes. Uh, yes. I will give you uh, the floor uh, now. Uh, please. Thank you. <coughs> Mr. Witness, today uh, 
at the time we had a break after I finished my questions for you. Did we have contact, the two of us? Answer, no. Question, when was the first time that you had contact with me as a counsel for Mr. Mustafa? Answer, only today. Question, thank you. This, this was your, uh, your question. Okay, thank you, uh, Defence Counsel. Um, very well. Mr. Prosecutor, would you like to do a rejoinder? Uh, no, Your Honour, thank you. Okay, no. There are no questions from the Victims' Counsel. Then um, let us see where we stand with the questions. Um, you have been asked questions uh, by uh, the Defence and by uh, the prosecution. And uh, now it's uh, the turn for uh, the panel uh, to see if we need some clarification on, uh, on issues uh, we have been, uh, you, have, you are, have been giving evidence on uh, today in order to, uh, to assist the panel uh, to find the truth. I will now ask my colleagues if there are any further uh, questions for you uh, to pose to you. Uh, I, for my part, I don't have any questions. I don't have any questions either. No. Please, you have the floor. Um, Mr. Witness, um, this morning um, you said, and that's page 14, lines 11 to 13 of the transcript, after 48 hours, we arrived in Rimaniste. This happened on 8 to 10 April. Uh, are you sure about that? It did not happen on the 8th of April. From the 10th of April. On the 9th was the offensive. On the 10th they were wounded, not on the 8th. Okay, so how much time did it take you to arrive in Rimaniste? 48 hours. Okay. Um, in your uh, statement to the defense, you explain, and we have been discussing that at length, but I just want to be clear, that up to college, and that's, sorry, DSM 00094. Up to college, there was no problem. But then when we reached college, two people came to escort us up to Ribanista. They were showing us the way where to go. So, and then you say, uh, uh, you are asked, did you know these people? No. Do you know their names? I do not remember, but at least twice people called the names Charlie Stanley. We will not go back to that. I'm interested simply to be clear on the fact that this person came only in college and up to Rimaniste. Is that, is that clear? This person escorted us from college to Rimaniste. From college to Rimaniste. How much time did it take from college to Rimaniste? Do you remember? I don't know, we didn't uh, have watches. I wouldn't be able to tell you. We did not have GPSs, we were in tractors. Okay. Because um, on, on page 38, lines 2, 3, you are speaking about this tractor with those two persons overtaking you. And you said it was on 4, 5 p.m., at 4, 5 p.m., that it overtook you in college. So, 4, 5 p.m., I guess it's the day after you left Turichiche. So, we are already on 11 April, or are we already on 12 April? Uh, 
me dhe pril. On 10th of April, the two persons were wounded in Surdu village. I explained that. On 10th of April, we set off towards Rimanisht from Turicids, Rakinids, Blat, and through all those villages that I mentioned, and if need be, I can mention them again. With two persons in the tractor, they escorted us up to Kolic. In Kolic. At Kolic, at one part of Kolic, those two persons went back because they were familiar with the tractor. Terrain. Then two other persons came in one tractor, not in two tractors. So they came in one tractor and they escorted us up to Rimanisht. That I understood perfectly. But if I go back to the map which was shown to you, you went to Fruit. Then you started in Toeshice, then Rakinich, then Blach then Kalatic, then Krucevice, then Balaban, then College. So, and then from College is only Charban and Rimaniste. So I understand that it is rather at the end of your journey that this tractor with those two persons came. Near the end. Okay, so this tractor with those two persons only came towards the end of your journey, just between college and Rimanichte. That I understood correctly. Oh, please say yes or no. Oh, oh, oh. Yes, yes. I have no further question, Madam Presiding Judge. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Mr. Rahimi, we have reached the end of your testimony. So I would like to thank you for your efforts this morning uh, to give your testimony, and I'm sure it will uh, help us in our efforts to, to find the truth. So thank you very much. I will uh, uh, ask Madame Kortasje to uh, usher you out of the courtroom. We wish you a safe journey home, and I remind you that you should not discuss uh, your testimony before the specialist chambers with anyone. Thank you again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Court Usher. Is there anything the parties would like to raise, uh, Mr. Prosecutor? No, Your Honor. Thank you. Victims Council. No, thank you, Your Honors. Very well. Defense Council. Nothing, Your Honor. Very well. Then, uh, if there's nothing else uh, we have to discuss, we will resume on Wednesday, 20th of April at 9.30 with the testimony of uh, witness uh, 1300. And I have seen that for uh, next week, Already, all the uh, uh, lists are uh, by the defence are procured for the for the whole week, uh, uh, and uh, thank you for uh, for that. Uh, the hearing is adjourned. All right.